Hi there everyone, I'm Alex. Welcome back to Drummer Artista for Studios. Today, we're gonna be using some EVA foam clay and a two-part silicone mold to make parts to use in a foam prop. So recently I put out a video where I talked about making my EVA foam Mjolnir for my Thor cosplay. One of the things I touched on in the video but didn't fully explain how I did was creating the decorative knotwork that is on the faces of the hammer. And I wanted to go into more detail in that than I could in that video. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The process I used for making this knotwork. So the first step in the process is to take equal parts of the mold compound and mix them together. You just knead it by hand into a ball, roll it around, make sure it's nicely mixed, and it will be a uniform color when you're done. It only takes maybe 20 seconds to mix it all together. It's very easy. You then press it down onto your design. In this case, I was using the side face of the hammerhead here to get the nut work. So I just press it onto it, just pinching around the sides to try and keep it as box-like as I could. But I made sure that it flowed over the edge here so I could get the entire flat surface in. And I kept it about 3 eighths of an inch thick. So this, it actually just snaps right onto that knot work there. So it looked relatively the way it does right here. I had, after it dried, which it will fully cure in half hour or so. So this sets up very quickly and you can start using it right away. After it was done, it just peels right off. And then I came back in with a ruler and a razor knife and made sure I trimmed the edges so that they were nice and straight. And I pretty much just followed this decorative lip that goes around the knot work to be able to do that. After that was done, I used Sintra plastic that I think I'm using eighth inch. Yeah, it's just under eighth inch. So this looks like it's about a, a one or two millimeter plastic. But I used Sintra plastic, which you can just cut using a razor knife. I score it and snap it. And these are half inch wide strips of plastic that I used. And what I did is I created a box right around the rubber. And I actually made it by taking the strips, setting it up against the plastic and gluing it together right around the rubber so that I know it's a perfect fit. And I did that so that I would have this raised lip going around it and that gives me how thick my clay is going to be when I press it in there. The other thing I did after I built the box is I came back in with masking tape and covered the top half of the walls in masking tape and that created a mold release so that I don't risk the foam clay sticking to the plastic because it won't stick to the silicone but there's a chance it might stick to this when it starts to dry. So after that box was created with the tape, my mold is now ready to go. Now what I ended up doing was I actually created two. Each one got a little bit different amounts of detail in it because the amount of detail you pick up all depends on how you press it onto your work. With stuff like this, it's very easy. I've actually molded tree bark using this stuff to use an actual porcelain clay work. But I created two molds so that I can work on two pieces at a time because the foam clay dries with the air. So every time I open this package up, it's gonna start to dry the clay out. So I wanted to be able to work as quickly as I could. So now that the mold is done, the next step is to go ahead and start pressing your clay. I am using a lightweight foam clay from SKS Props and Costume Supply. This is available through their site, which takes you to Blick Art Supplies. I simply got this because I was putting an order in anyway, and I wanted to experiment with it, but I'm very happy with it so far. You don't have to use this stuff. You can get FOMO, which was the first type I had ever heard of. You can get that on Amazon or there's numerous other vendors that you can buy this stuff from. 
What I like about this is that because it's an air drying clay, they actually have it double sealed. So you've got a nice plastic container that seals it off, but then it's in a plastic bag inside of that. So every time I close it, I can press air out of it to try and seal it up as much as possible. But all you do is take some clay out and you have to play with this to know how much you need to use. I've made quite a few of these design pieces now. So I've pretty much got it figured out. And you can see I've got my piece out. So now I am pressing as much air out as I can and sealing the bag back up because I want this to last as long as possible. So I'm just going to create a ball of the clay to make sure I get it as smooth together as I can so there aren't any creases. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out a little bit so it's closer to the shape of my mold. And that's about all the shaping I'm going to do with it. I'll then set it right in the middle and then press down from the middle, working my way out to either side, making sure to press firmly down the entire way. By starting from the middle and working out, it's helping to push the clay into all the recesses of the mold. So you can see I'm trying to level it out so it's even with the top of the mold. It is a little bit higher, which means I had a little bit more clay than I needed, but not much, so this is actually good. I mainly wanted to do this because it limits the amount of clay I'm using and limits the amount I'm going to be losing when I eventually go in and sand this down. Now you could just leave it right like that and let it dry. This stuff takes 24 to 48 hours to fully cure. The thing I have learned though is because it dries with the air, any surface that isn't exposed to the air will dry slower. It will also cause weird amounts of shrinkage. So if I left it in here and then pulled it out later, as the other surface starts to dry, it will actually form a bow because this won't stretch the same amount as the other side. So what I started doing after my first two pulls of this, because I let the first two dry overnight, I then came pulled it out and let it air dry that way. And I had a, a little bow in the piece that it flexes enough, it was able to come out, so it worked. But I wanted to try and make them a little bit more uniform. So what I actually do is I press the mold from the back and lift the rubber right out with the clay still on it. I will then very gently Peel the clay right off of the silicone. And leaves me with my molded piece, just like that. Now what I will do is I come back in. Usually I put them on a board so that it's easier for me to move them around. But now that it's pulled out of the mold, I can come back in with some silicone tipped sculpting tools and use these to enhance any of the details that might not have shown up from the molding process. So I can just sit here and kind of use this to enhance any of the spots that if it didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to look, I can round up some edges and square up some sections and do whatever extra detailing I want right now while it's still pliable. Since it is not work, I can make everything look quite a bit nicer by doing this. But even without really doing anything to it, a mold that quickly made, that's the level of detail you get from this. And then usually what I did 
is I would let this dry probably about half a day, maybe a little less. And then what I did is I flipped it over and every 10 hours or so, or I'd go half the day if I worked on it in the morning, at lunch I'd flip it, in the evening I'd flip it back, and then in the morning I'd flip it again. Just keep bouncing it back and forth because that allows it to dry a bit more evenly so that you get nice flat pieces. So here are one of the pieces that I pulled earlier. And you can see it's got a little bit of a warp to it, but nothing much. It's enough that when I press this in, it'll be fine. You can see it flexes fairly well and it will sand and cut beautifully. Uh, this stuff puts out actually a lot of powder when you go to sand it. But that is the simple process for making these little pieces. So there you go. You can see how easy it is to work with this material, both the mold and the foam clay. I know I will do more videos on the foam clay in the future. The more I use it, the more experiment with it. I have a few more projects in mind that it will really come in handy on, so we'll see how easy it is to work with for those. In the description for this video, I will include links for both the SKS foam clay and the FOMO that I know a lot of other cosplayers and prop makers have used. I will also include links for being able to find the silicone putty if you have a project you think you could use for making those. I like the putty because it's very easy to work with and these little half pound packages are a lot cheaper than buying pourable silicone mold to try and make props and you don't have to worry about parting sections and stuff. So this works very well for doing a lot of simple basic detail work. Hopefully this was able to expand a little bit on how I did some of the most intricate work with Mjolnir. And hopefully it gave some of you guys an idea of something you might be able to accomplish using it in some of your own props or cosplays. So thanks for watching. As always, I'm Alex, and this has been Drummer Artista for Studios. See you next time. Hi there everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to our drummer... Oh.